Hello everybody and welcome back to another Tableau Tip Tuesday, the series where we take some of Tableau's functionality and break it down into its base components to make it easier to understand and implement. Today, as the title suggests, we're going to be going over data extracts, and I want to be clear before I waste anybody's time uh, that we're going to be going over leveraging your local machine to create an extract, save it locally, and then publish it to a server. Now, if you have data sets that are uh, a lot larger, that copy of the data on the local machine may be prohibitive to you. So there will be another video coming about how we can leverage our server to do those extracts as well. But again, the type of extract we're going to go over in this case will have some useful information to both parties, but will be catered towards those using their local machine to create those extracts. All right, so first things first, what is a data extract? It's a way for you to take a local copy of your data, whether that resides on your local machine or your server, it is a copy of your data. And then you can leverage server in order to do things like extract, refresh it, so you get your incremental rows in there. You can set your permissions so only the correct people can view that data um, in, in, uh, in the server schedules. Um, all sorts of fun things that we can do with extract, but an extract in and of itself is a, a, um, a subset or a copy of some or all of your data. Now, the two main use cases for extract are one, if you are going to lose the internet, perhaps you're jumping on a flight or something of that nature, and you're not going to have the internet, you can take an extract, which would be a local copy of your data, and then you could continue to work while you do not have internet. And then once you get internet back, you could resume your live connection to get those incremental uh, rows in there. Now, the second and more common use case is to act as a middleman between you and your server. So if you have your source tables that reside on a server and you're connecting directly to them, remember it is that server that performs all those aggregations and calculations as we're building our views. So it might be a lot more hardware spinups on our server than we might want. So instead, we can connect to an extra extract that is scheduled by the server to be refreshed so you will still get your incremental rows in there but now you've created a middleman in that extract that's going to perform those aggregations rather than requiring your server to do all of that work all right so let's go ahead and dive into it we're going to cover it start to finish here there's a lot of things that we can cover a lot of nooks and crannies that we can go into but now that we understand that we are possibly taking our source tables and maybe we're slicing it for different viewers right maybe we have some bi analysts that do time series data and some that do geographical data and maybe they don't need all the fields in our source tables so we can kind of limit it to just the data that they need now that in turn is going to reduce the amount of data that saves with that workbook which is going to improve performance on all aspects aspects of interacting with that dashboard, whether you're embedding it or, or accessing it directly, it's just going to be a little bit faster. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to our data source tab here. The first thing we need to do is we need to uh, add our data, obviously. Now, part of the extract is that you can model complex tables. It doesn't have to just be one table. For our instances, to keep this video simple, we're just going to model it based off of this one table. I don't have to have any joins or unions going on in order to get my extract. Now, on the top right, this will be on live as soon as we start. But if I toggle it on over to extract, we have a new edit button that appears right here. And this is going to be our means of controlling what goes into this extract. Now, as a note here, other things such as data role changes right here, you know, perhaps you want to change a region into a geographic role so you can map it, or perhaps you want to set the default property of a currency field to be a, um, uh, to have a dollar sign or maybe fewer decimal places. Um, that is stuff that will carry through with your extract as well. So you want to make sure you're diligent so you don't have to do these small changes every time you connect to that extract in changing your data roles and adding currency symbols and so on. All right, so we're not going to cover that in, a, in this video. We have a whole other video on how to model and edit our data. But for now, we're just going to edit our extract in the way that it will look. You can go ahead and add filters if you would like. Maybe you only want profit above zero. Maybe you only want your top 100 customer names. If we select these and press OK, you can see it acts as exactly as you would expect a dimensional filter to work at the sheet level, at the context level, at the database level. All right, so that's the first thing right there. We can go ahead and keep uh, only what we want to keep right here. Next, we can aggregate data for visible dimensions. This is when you're extracting for a workbook that has already been completed. It's going to look through all the sheets that you've used and it's going to aggregate data up to the level that you have used. And then down below that, you have some sampling techniques. So you can just take the top end number of rows. You have a history button so you can see if your extract that you're connected to has received its incremental rows from the server. But that doesn't happen for us because we are learning how to post the extract itself. All right, so as soon as I press OK right here and I navigate over to a new sheet, it's going to ask me where I would like to save that extract. 
So we can go ahead and save that in uh, what I refer to as Tableau's brain, but you might know it as the Tableau repository here. And now you can see when I go to my new sheet that I have an icon living up here of a double data source, uh, that double drum barrel right there. Um, and that means that we are connected to that local extract that we've created. Now we still have more steps to do. So now we need to right click this and we need to publish this extract that we have saved locally. We want to publish it to our Tableau server. So if we go ahead and publish this to our server, it's going to pop up with a box here that will have a couple of options you want to be aware of. First of all, you need to have your Tableau server set up with the project that you're going to be posting it to. And you also need to have permission to that project. So in this case, we're going to use Meek and Demo right here. We need to name it. So I'll say orders global superstore and I'll say all years. We could add a description or a tag to make it easier to find. We'll neglect that for right now. We see our permissions are set right here. We can edit those on the server level or right here. And then this right here is what we're after, update workbook to use the published data source. So that means rather than being connected to the flat file that's living on my computer that is not going to have a refresh schedule to get incremental rows, that means we want to update it to the one that we will have published to the server. That way, when we set up that refresh schedule, it will automatically tie into this workbook because we'll have a live connection to that extract living on the server. So as soon as I hit publish right here, we're gonna notice that that double drum barrel right there in the top left is going to change to that live extract icon. Again, you always wanna be very familiar with the iconography Tableau is going to use so you get a quick visual reference if you are connected to what you would like to actually be connected to, right? Always going to be important. All right, so this brings us to what we just posted right here. If we go ahead and we explore to that project right here, we can see that we have another connection. We have some asset data. You may or may not have this depending on your version of Tableau. Um, we can go ahead and use the ask data right here. But again, now we're ready to start a new workbook using that connection that we just made. Now, if we removed a customer column, that doesn't come through with that new, uh, with that new workbook, thus reducing the amount of size um, that sits behind Tableau. All right, another great use for an extract here is perhaps this is going to be our all years of information. Now, one thing that I've already taken the time to do is I published just the most recent year of this data source. Perhaps if you have large data sets, all years might be a little bit uh, cumbersome for some of your calculations. So a great use case for an extract is maybe you just want the most recent data in one workbook, but maybe you wanna swap that easily uh, in order to analyze historical data. Maybe that historical analysis only happens uh, um, at certain points in the year. Well, now we can connect to our Tableau server. We don't have to connect to our source tables because that connection is embedded within the extract. When we connect to this, you'll see that it's going to ask me to search for my data here. And if I scroll down, we should find a data source that I have access to that says, there you go, orders 2020. So only the most recent year of information. Now, if I connect to that, right here and use the data source, I can easily just go ahead, right click and replace that data source with the other one and publish a new version of that workbook. So depending on the one that you need to analyze, A, historical data, or B, just the most current year, you can just connect to whichever workbook connects to that extract. So you don't have to go back and make this chart that I know is a really, really simple chart, but uh, us Tableau users know that sometimes these charts get quite, co um, quite complex. Remember that once you get your extract posted, you need to control your refresh schedule and your permissions from your server. And in order to do that, you will need to be an administrator. So a common way to create extracts is to have an architect that models the data for you. And then you just wanna make sure that you have some sort of a form that you can request changes to those extracts. Another beauty of using Tableau Server is you can place the same extract into multiple projects so that multiple people with permissions to the project have access to them um, and you can control your permissions that way. All right, so hopefully that helps us understand why we should be using extracts, whether we're publishing for different audiences, publishing for different uh, projects, or publishing just simply to refine the amount of data that sits behind Tableau. Extracts are a great way to do that. That's all we have for you this time. Join us next week for another tip.